What are you doing under here? Come on, we've got an oil change to do. Jesus, unbelievable. Welcome back to another video, guys. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing an oil change on the RS6. And we're gonna be hypothesizing around why my oil smells like fuel. So come with me to the board. So here we are at the rather professional dad's garage board of theories or board of hypotheses. So currently I've got an issue where my oil has a smell of fuel. Now, commonly in an RS6 and most of the four liter TFSI engines, at a certain point around about 30, 40,000 miles, the high pressure fuel pumps go and that starts to leak um, fuel into the oil and then you get like a general smell of fuel in the oil. So if you take the oil filler cap off, give a little smell, you tend to smell um, fuel or, or, or gasoline, petrol or gasoline. Now, I recently had that and what I did is a 600 pound expense plus 100 pound of oil, so 700 pounds and another, you know, 30, 40 quid for filters and things like that, change the high pressure fuel pumps. So that technically shouldn't be the reason. Another reason could be that the piston rings have gone and we're losing compression. Um, fuel's leaking past the piston rings into the oil. Now, I have also recently done a compression test. So the piston rings are good. Three of the theories left. The positive crankcase ventilation unit isn't getting rid of the ex excess gas um, and that's causing vapors to just contaminate the fuel and, and have that general fuel smell. I am in an upcoming video in the next probably week or two, we're gonna completely change the high pressure, uh, sorry, the, the positive crankcase ventilation valve. So that is a bit of a question mark. And there's some other bits I'm gonna do while I'm in there around the oil, um, the oil screen and the oil um, check valve, but I'll tell you more about that in the next video. Another possible reason and an expensive fix could be that we've got a leaky injector. So a leaky injector is a question mark because I'll have to get the car plugged in to check the, the injectors and the fuel rails and just see um, if, if the injectors are stuck open. The car runs brilliantly, like really, really well. So I don't think it's an injector, but it is a plausible possibility. The final theory or hypothesis is the tune. So it is stage two tuned. Um, it could be that the tune's running particularly rich um, and it's putting excess fuel into the, the combustion chamber. That fuel's not being burnt, it's leaking past the piston rings eventually and into the fuel. That's a possibility. Also, you might have saw in the last video that I, um, I fixed an exhaust leak around the, the downpipes. So potentially that, those exhaust leaks could have been um, bringing more air in to the, um, past the, past the um, sensor and it was making the car run rich. So again, could have been put more fuel in. I don't think so, but it's a possibility. So we'll question mark the tune for another time. So I think checking the injectors in the tune can be done in a one um, if I take it back to the, the, the tune place. Um, I've only got a small dyno here. So we do have the Audi TT in for a dyno run today, um, but it's, the dyno is not quite big enough um, for, the, for the RS6. So we'll have to take that to a, a different shop. Um, so anyway, so today, back to what the point of the video is today, we're gonna, Change the oil, I'm just gonna do a quick run through of how I'm gonna change the oil and we're gonna stick in some fairly cheap Castrol Edge 530. This is what's in currently and I only put a fresh oil change in 500 miles ago. Um, best part of 100 pounds worth of oil. Unfortunately, I'm gonna drain it 500 miles, not ideal. I am doing a road trip next weekend. I'm coming to see my friend Quentin Carr, if you're watching, come to see you, buddy. Um, in the northeast from Manchester, so it's about 300 mile round trip plus maybe 50, 60 miles while I'm there. I don't wanna risk running the car that distance if there is some fuel in the oil. Probably won't make too much difference, but I just want, you know, for the sake of 50 quid, I wanna make sure it's right. So today we're gonna to be sticking in some Castrol Edge. Um, we're gonna drain the oil out of the bucket. We're gonna give it a good sniff. We're gonna give it a good smell. See how, how bad it smells of fuel. I'll probably get a clear cup as well and we'll just have a little look through to see what the oil looks like and just generally compare it to fresh oil because this all could just be my head but you know car like this better safe than sorry so before we drain the oil let's just have a little look and see how much is in currently so before we oh hang on what's this mm, interesting video coming soon so on these modern Audis we digress RS6 baby so on these modern Audis you can't just put the oil in 
pour it in, check the dipstick, pour a little bit more in, check the dipstick. You have to check the oil levels on the MMI system in here, but you can't check the oil levels until the car's been run up to temperature. And then you have to come in here and you have to go to car settings, car system, vehicle settings, sorry, tell a lie, service and checks, and then into oil level. Now, that's great, but the problem is, if you drain the oil and you're putting fresh oil in, you can't then check to make sure that you haven't put too much in or too little. You've got to turn the ignition on, you've got to fire it up, you've got to let it warm to temperature, and then you have to come back in and check. So if you put too little oil in, then the car's going to be running with, hard, with not enough oil in. And if you put too much in, the car's going to be running with too much oil. Both are bad scenarios. So what I'm going to do, and what I recommend, is drain the oil into a bucket, put a bucket that's got the measurements on in litres, um, see how much exactly how much has come out and then measure that and then pour the same amount back in then at least you know you're going to be roughly back around what you had when you started i have done this before the first time i did it i just put in the, the amount of oil that it said in the manual and it was way full um, and i had to go underneath undo the sump plug drain some out put the sump plug back in and then do the whole process again so a bit of a nightmare so that's what i'm going to do today we've got a bucket on the top that's ready to go a, a one pound bucket from b&q I'm going to mark on so I know 1 litre, 2 litre, 3 litre, 4 litre, etc. Drain the oil, see where it comes up to, and then I've got a, I've got a 1 litre jug. So I'm going to use that to, a, to get exactly the right number of litres back in the engine. Right, let's get the car in the air, let's get underneath, get that oil out. Right, that's the car in the air. I've just taken the fuel cap off and lay it just here so the oil drains out smoothly and doesn't gulp and splash all over. Next job, take the under trays off. Any drinks, snacks, drinks or snacks? Right, so what tools do we need today to take the under trays off? So we're gonna use the big Dak Dak. We're going to use the little dac dac and then we're going to need a few bits. So we'll need this M10 spline. Stick that in there. Then we're going to need, there we go, T25 Torx. Stick that in there. And we're going to need a T30 Torx. Stick that on there. Oh, missed. Oh, missed. Hey! And then, we're going to need a little itty bitty screwdriver. Right, let's get these under trays off. Right, so that's the under tray off. We've now got access to the sump plug. Sorry, I didn't find a group or device named tree. She banging on about. <laughs> so, as I was saying, we've now got access to the sump plug and also the oil filter housing. So we'll put some cardboard down, we'll take the sun plug out, we'll drain the oil in the bucket, we'll take the, um, the oil filter cap off as well, the housing, drain the oil out of there. We'll, go, we'll take the oil over there, we'll give it a good smell, we'll have a look at the consistency and the viscosity, see if it's a bit more runny, if it's really been diluted down with fuel. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll make sure we put exactly the amount of fresh oil back in here as it's come out. We'll bring the car down, we'll run up to temperature and we'll check it. So, come on, let's crack on. Right, we've got the GoPro set up. We've got some rags. Get a bit of that ready. We've got a bucket, empty bucket, and we've got our um, H6 hex bit. So, righty righty, lefty loosey. Let's loosen this off. And then see if we can get this out without making too much of a mess. You ready? Oh, ho, ho, expert. Right. Let that drain out now. Got a little time lapse. Oh, I can smell it already. Yeah, it smells.
Looks like we've got a gusher. Now, to me, that sounds quite watery, quite runny. But we'll check it out when we get the bench in a minute. So this is now fully drained, so we'll give it a little wipe. We'll pop the sump plug back in and then we'll move the bucket over and crack open this oil filter housing and just get the last of the oil out. I'm not changing the filter today because it was changed 500 miles ago and when I get back from my trip to the northeast and I do the PCV system I'm probably going to put fresh oil in and fresh filter anyway so there's no point changing it just yet. It's literally just the oil we want to change today. All right, this is open now. It's starting to leak. Let's see if we can get it in the bucket. Oh, motherfucker. Mostly. <laughs> this is why I put cardboard down. All right, I'll clean this shit up and I'll check back with you guys in a second. So crazy from a simple maybe It was a long way down I just feel so heavy Without you Everything we want was just so pretty Sports Direct mug today So, we're about to get scientific now So I've drained the oil And there was exactly seven and a half litres So if I'd put the full 8.7 in there now, going off the guidance, it would be well over the top. It would be maxed out. So seven and a half litres, that's exactly what I'm going to put back in. We've got eight litres today of Castrol Edge. Um, obviously, this video isn't sponsored by Castrol Edge. This, I'm just showing you what I'm using. Um, so I'll put seven and a half litres back in, and then I've got half a litre left if I need a little top up or anything like that. But what we're doing at the, the bench now is just having a look at the oil that's come out. So I know exactly how much has come out, which is great. But I just want to have a look at the consistency of the oil that's come out after 500 miles versus brand new fresh oil. Now I'm not expecting it to be identical because it has been run through the engine for 500 miles and heat cycled quite a few times, but I wanna know, is there a difference in smell and is there a difference in viscosity, i.e. is this one a little bit more watered down due to fuel contamination versus the fresh oil? So we're gonna do this live now together um, and pop your comments in the comment box whether you think this consistency is too runny and it's definitely fluid contaminated. Or if you think it's more or less similar to that, and actually I'm probably, um, bar the smell, um, stressing over nothing. So let's have a look. So this is the, um, this is the new stuff, the stuff that I've just taken out. So I'm gonna smell the bucket. So there definitely is a, a, a smell of fuel. It doesn't smell like smelling a petrol can, but there definitely is a smell of fuel to it. This is like the world's shittest wine test, isn't it? Or beer test. It doesn't smell as bad smelling this as it does when you lift the oil cap up, which makes me think it could be the PCV valve, but there is, there is a blatant smell of fuel though. It doesn't smell, it doesn't smell of like just oil or nothing. So that's the, the smell test. What I want to do now is have a look at the viscosity difference. So um, this guys, I'll bring it over here. This is fresh, fresh oil not being used. So I'm just going to pour that into here. Have a look at that and see what you think in terms of like viscosity. All right, we're draining the dregs out there now. It's, it's dribbling, okay? Now let's have a look at this one. Now I think this is gonna be the telltale sign really if it's, um, if it's watered down a bit. So hopefully you can see this the same. That to me definitely looks thinner. And there, that, that dripping's less, there's less volume, thickness to that. Um, it's less full bodied. Um, yeah, so those drips compared to... Okay, so that's where I'm at. It's a close one. I definitely think there is, there is fuel in this. Um, it does smell of fuel, and, and I don't think that's just from the, the PCV um, unit fumes. I think there's still fuel getting in. I'm gonna change the oil anyway for peace of mind. Um, and that'll get me through the next weekend for my little road trip. And then the weekend after, we're gonna strip the front end down and we'll fit that PVC unit. So, so stay tuned for that video, that's gonna be a good one. We'll fit that unit. I still don't think that's fully gonna fix it, but it's worth a try. 
After that, I guess my, uh, my next step is to consider, do I, do I take the plunge and buy another pair of high pressure fuel pumps and fit them and assume that the last one, the last lot were faulty or one of them was faulty? Do an engine, uh, an oil flush and see if that's fixed it. Um, or is there a better way? If you guys know, let me know in the comment box if there's, a, if there's some kind of easy, quick solution that's gonna tell me whether it's the high pressure fuel pumps, if it's an injector or if it's something else. Right, so we've got the car down now. Just gonna pop up our uh, undercar lights. Don't forget guys, check out my video on how I made these. I've used them like five times already. So I'm gonna time lapse to pop that oil in. And we're gonna put exactly seven and a half liters in. We'll run the car temperature, we'll check the oil level, make sure there's no leaks underneath and then we'll get the under trays back on. Okay, so just checking underneath, there's no visible leaks, nothing coming out the sun plug, nothing coming out the filter housing, and there's nothing on the floor. So we just need to get the under tray back on, and I think we're good. And just like that, all done. So, we've just checked the oil levels and we're bang on where we were when we started. So the little technique of measuring the oil that comes out and putting exactly back in what we took out has done the trick. So we're just about cleared up now, but I want to say a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed over the last couple of days. Uh, it's fantastic to see so many of you starting to follow the channel. Again, this isn't brown, groundbreaking stuff, this is just basic general DIY mechanics in Dad's garage. Um, effectively, you're just hanging out with me in the garage. So. Hopefully you enjoy the content and you can follow me on my journey of the general RS6 life, the kind of things that you can do yourself to maintain and upkeep a, a car like this. And then obviously follow me for some of the other content that's gonna be coming up. The weather's horrendous outside at the moment. So when it starts to dry out, get a bit nicer, we'll get in the garden, we'll start doing some joinery and DIY projects. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Boom.